the way you fight a wildfire is you put it out at inception. When's the best time to find a cancer? At the very beginning, at inception, not when it's a stage four metastasized cancer that you're fighting at all fronts. And that's what we're doing today with, with wildfires. We're not fighting them at the beginning. We're fighting them when they're a conflagration and we're trying to fight them with everything we've got. And we've got incredible heroes out there, just to be very clear, the, the men and women who are, are on the front line. Um, you know, fire truck technology is amazing. Uh, all of the helicopters and aircraft. And I'm like, I snuck into my house in Santa Monica. Don't tell the cops to go and gather my, one of my kids' medicines and some clothes because we didn't, I didn't take it seriously when I first, when I first heard about it. We went with minimal stuff. Um, and I'm seeing the helicopters doing drops and I'm seeing the planes. Uh, and it was like, go, yes, go. It was amazing. But why aren't we finding it at inception? So I had the idea for an X prize that was monitor a thousand square acres of land. And if you detect a fire that's three meters, nine feet or larger, or if it's moving, put it out within 10 minutes. That's the rules. Super simple. I'm not able to fund this any place. And, you know, people are saying it's a natural part of fire control that, you know, forests need to be have controlled burns. I'm like, that's not the point. There are places in our society where you should not have something that's three meters or size or a fire moving, like in downtown Pacific Palisades. Just don't expect it there. So let fires burn where they should burn in natural, uh, you know, natural cycles of nature. But let's protect other parts. And so one day I finally got a hold of uh, Dick Merkin, uh, an incredible physician and entrepreneur. Michael Milken introduced me to him. And I said, Dick, I need you to fund the design of a prize. And I explained it to him. He said, sure. And, you know, that's what I love. Like Elon Musk said, sure, instantly to a $100 million carbon removal prize. And Dick Merkin gave us a half a million to design this prize. And the prize is very simple. There are two parts of it. One part is from space, can you monitor the earth for any sign of fires? That's one part, global monitoring. The second part is, can you provide a system that monitors a given thousand square acres, call it Napa Valley, call it Pacific Palisades, whatever you want. And if it detects any fire within that area, again, not a, you know, not a person you know, roasting weenies on a grill, something that's three meters or moving, put it out within 10 minutes. And that put it out within 10 minutes is probably the most important rule because in high winds, if you're waiting more than 10 minutes, you've lost it. So long story short, it took a while to get this prize funded. Uh, we ended up getting the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation uh, as a co-title sponsor, along with Pacific Gas and Electric. Um, we got Mindaru Foundation out of Australia, the Hilton Foundation, the Lockheed Martin Foundation, the American Family Mutual Insurance Company, Temis out of Greece, because Greece was being decimated by mm -hmm. wildfires. Roddenberry Foundation, uh, Fairfax Financial, a couple individuals, uh, Scott Painter, um, who had lost his home, committed a million dollars to this prize. And I just learned a couple of days ago that in the Palisades fire, he lost his home for a second time. Oh. Uh, um, you know, we've had a number of people, Steve Brown, my, my, uh, you know, my chief AI officer lost his home for a second time. And, uh, it's kind of insane. Long story short, we announced the prize. Uh, we have had 135 teams enter the competition. We're down to a final 29 teams that are in the semifinals. Uh, and these teams are going to be using aerial drones. They're going to be using sound cannons. They're going to be using um, high lift uh, you know, UAVs. They're going to be using swarms of drones. They're going to be attacking this from every way possible in order to go to the fire at inception and put it out immediately. See, that's what I think fire insurance should be in the future. They should be installing that if you buy insurance. I, and by the way, one of the things I, you, you know, it's interesting because uh, when I wrote the white paper, um, I paid 
kind of the least amount of attention to fire extinguishing because I knew you were starting the X Prize. I was like, okay, Peter might have this one. Like he's got that element, you know, in it. Um, though like, some of the, you know, I know, and I, the the satellite dad. I don't know, like the satellite stuff is kind of amazing. We're already like I think uh, like Planet Labs in two thousand. Um, well, yeah, Cal Fire. I think Cal Fire said that like it's an, it's or NASA uh, fire detection is ninety five percent accurate. Like the we definitely we definitely the accuracy from the satellites is there. Planet um is definitely well positioned. Will Marshall is well positioned. This is definitely a job for CubeSats. You said something before we started this podcast that I think was prophetic about this is a job for robots. Yeah, that's a, that maybe we'll let's start there with the technological discussion. The reason I was thinking about it is you and I were talking maybe two or three days ago about melting Teslas and flat screen TVs and, and, and the pollutants and the level of toxicity. And the first thing I thought was, if there ever is ever a job for Elon and, and the and the Optimus robot, it's this. And the reason is for, for you, you know, if you look at cleanup. Well, yeah, if you look at so many of the developments in robotics, early ones were coming out of Japan and they were disaster responses, right? The, the Fukushima, uh, the Fukushima, Fukushima, uh, Fukushima, Fukushima, Fukushima right. thank you. Right, the Fukushima and Eltown, uh, really triggered a whole new generation of disaster odds. Even wasn't, am I wrong, but didn't Boston Dynamics start out making disaster response robots? It was for the military, including disaster response. Yeah, the Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster where they couldn't get anybody into the reactor to turn the damn thing off uh, spawned the DARPA challenges, robotic challenges. Right. That was it. Thank you. Yeah. That's exactly it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we, we've just you – we're obviously – we're working on a, a new book, and we've just finished a couple of chapters on the future of robots, and – um. You and I know that human eyed robots are, are really the next frontier. They're here, they're now. It's just about getting them to scale. And here's a phenomenal opportunity. You know, I, we launched this wildfire prize. It's $11 million purse. It should be a $100 million purse. By the way, for if sure. you want to 10x the purse size, just give me a call, please. Um, and we announced it uh, at the Capitol. Uh, and Palmer Lucky was there from mm -hmm. Anderil, right? Uh, the founder of Oculus, but really has built a massive multi-billion dollar defense company. And he got it. And he said, listen, uh, at the end of this competition, we are going to make wildfires a thing of the past. And I've seen the technology that he plans to use. There are other companies that are using these you know, aerial jets, you know, which can literally fly to the to the point of fire in a couple of minutes and then land and then blow those fires out that's the kind of technology we're seeing i think we'll have ground uavs i think we'll have humanoid robots on the ready i mean honestly there's no reason that these should exist 